macOS Tahoe is now available to the general public. And if you've got a compatible Mac, it brings with it a ton of new customization options, more than you might expect at first glance. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the different ways that I've found to customize your Mac with the new operating system and really make it your own. Okay, let's get into it. Let's start by talking about icon tinting. To access this, go into system settings and choose appearance from the sidebar on the left. Look for the section called icon and widget style, and in here you'll see a number of options that you can choose from. Default is the standard look that we've always had. Dark is of course dark mode, which has been on the Mac for years. If you click into dark, you can choose between auto, which is where your Mac will stay in default mode during the day and switch to dark mode at night, or you can choose always, which keeps it in dark mode all the time. You've also got an option called clear. This is a brand new style that's come across from the redesign on the iPhone, and it leans into the whole liquid glass look that Apple is now using across all of its operating systems. When you choose clear, you can pick a light or dark version or set it to auto, which works in the same way as dark mode. I actually really like the clear dark version where everything gets a black and white monotone look, so this is worth experimenting with. Then to the right of that, you've got tinted, and this is the option where you can really start to play around. You can choose light, dark or auto, but the main difference here is that you can tint your icons and widgets with a color of your choice. Once you've chosen tinted, you can then click into icons, widgets and folder color. Here you can pick from a set of primary colors like red, yellow, green and so on. Or if you press choose color down at the bottom, you'll get more flexibility. You've got two slider bars. The one on top lets you choose the overall color and the one underneath changes the intensity. You can also use the color picker which is really useful if you want to match the tint to a color in your wallpaper. This is a method that I've seen used quite a lot, where people create really nice themes by matching the tint perfectly to their wallpaper. That's actually the way that I'm using this myself. I download wallpapers from a site like unsplash.com, which is loads of free images, and I keep them in a folder on my Mac called Wallpapers. To add that folder to your wallpaper options, go to System Settings, then choose Wallpaper in the sidebar on the left. In the Your Photo section, click on Add Photo. Then in the Photo Sets drop-down, select Choose Folder. Navigate to where you've saved your wallpapers, select the folder and press Open. All of your wallpapers will then show up down at the bottom of the screen. What I like to do is turn on Rotate so that my wallpaper changes once a day. Then I go back into Appearance, keep my icons set to Tinted and use the Color Picker to grab a shade directly from the wallpaper that I'm using that day. It keeps the whole setup looking really coordinated. By the way, do you ever watch tips and tricks videos like this and think, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If that sounds like you, you should definitely check out Mac Essentials Plus, my dedicated training portal for the Mac. Inside, you'll find modules, each one covering a different part of the Mac system. Within each module, there are lessons, and each lesson includes a short video showing you exactly what to do, a step-by-step -step written guide complete with screenshots and a downloadable PDF, so no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. Right now, there are more than 200 lessons with new content being added all the time. You can work through them in order or use the search feature to jump straight to what you need. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content, and it's all available for a single payment with no recurring fees. That one payment also includes all future updates, including the new macOS 26 update that I'm rolling out now, so whether you're on the latest version of macOS or an older one, the content has you covered. And if you have an iPhone, you might also be interested in iPhone Essentials Plus, my dedicated iPhone training portal. You can buy either one separately or bundle them together for the best price. If that sounds good, scan the QR code on screen or check the link in the description or pinned comment. One of the standout visual changes in macOS Tahoe is that the menu bar is now completely transparent. Personally, I really like this, especially when I'm using it on a big external display, where the menu bar almost disappears into the screen, giving the illusion of more space. But you might not like it, and if that's the case, you can change it. Go to System Settings, then choose Menu Bar from the left-hand side. At the top of this page, you'll see an option called Show Menu Bar Background. If you toggle this on, the menu bar will get a background, making it easier to see. While you're here, it is worth looking at the rest of the customization options on this page. Scroll through the list and you'll see everything that can appear in the menu bar. You can untick an item to remove it completely, or for things like focus, you can set it to only appear when that focus mode is active or have it always showing. At the bottom of the page, 
you'll also see an allow in menu bar section. This lets you fully disable any tools that you don't want in the menu bar at all. Great if yours have been getting a bit cluttered and you'd rather just keep it to the essentials. And finally, this isn't new, but it is worth a reminder here. If you want to change the order of items in the menu bar, just press and hold the command key on your keyboard and drag them around into whatever order you like. The control center on the Mac is now fully customizable. And the good news is if you're already familiar with editing control center on the iPhone, you'll feel right at home here because it works almost exactly the same way on the Mac. So now when you click into it, you'll notice it looks completely different, much more like control center on the iPhone and there's an edit controls button at the bottom. Clicking this opens a new window showing all the different controls that you can add. If you've customized control center on an iPhone or an iPad, the layout will feel really familiar. There's a search bar in the top left for quickly finding a specific control, or you can scroll through the full list. If you see something you want to add, click the green plus icon on it, then choose add to control center. Once a control is in your control center, you can right click on it to switch between small, medium, or large sizes. Small is a single circular tile, medium is a one by two tile, and large is usually a two by two tile, although that can vary depending on the control. You can also choose to move controls into the menu bar instead, remove them entirely, or rearrange them by dragging. If you add more controls than the grid can fit, macOS will automatically create an extra control center page in your menu bar, so you can switch between them quickly. You can also create an extra page manually by pressing the plus button next to the control center icon in the menu bar. Spotlight Search on the Mac has had a complete redesign. I've got a full video about that coming out tomorrow, so check the channel if you're interested. But there is one feature that's especially relevant from a customization perspective, and that's actions. You can get to actions by opening Spotlight with command and the space bar like normal. Then either move your cursor to the four buttons at the top, it's the third one along, or just press command and three on your keyboard. Actions are basically pre-built shortcuts on your Mac that let you do a whole range of things. Some are simple, like setting an alarm, starting a timer, or opening a book in the Books app. Others are more advanced, and developers are already starting to add their own. On my main Mac, for example, both ChatGPT and Craft have already added actions. The idea is simple. Find an action that you want quick access to. Let's take ChatGPT as an example. One of the options is Start Conversation with ChatGPT. On the right, you'll see Add Quick Keys. Click on that and type in the shortcut that you want to use in Spotlight. So in this case, I tapped Chat and press Return. Now whenever I open Spotlight, I just type Chat and hit Return and it instantly starts a new conversation with ChatGPT. This is really powerful, especially if you're someone who repeats the same actions multiple times a day. It is worth taking a bit of time to look through the options and keep coming back as developers add more functionality over time. If you're a heavy keyboard shortcut user, you're gonna get a lot out of this. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, you should definitely check out The Proper Weekly. It's my free weekly newsletter that lands in your inbox every Friday, packed with tech news from the week, content I've been enjoying, and a handy tip for the Apple ecosystem. Just scan the QR code on screen to sign up, or follow the link in the description. You can now customize folders in Finder on the Mac, giving them a different color to the standard blue that we've had for years, and even assigning an icon or an emoji if you like. This works in any Finder view, but it is best in Icon View or Gallery View, where you can clearly see the changes. To do it, navigate to the folder that you want to edit, right click on it and choose Customize Folder from the menu. At the top of the window that appears, you can pick a color. Just keep in mind that this is tied to the tagging system that's been on the Mac for a long time. So if you already use tags, assigning a color will also assign that tag to the folder. If you don't use tags, then you can just treat these as colors and not worry about it. You can also scroll down and assign an icon. Apple has included a whole range here, categories like people, animals and nature, travel and places, objects, and more. Right at the bottom, you'll see an emoji button, which means you can drop an emoji straight onto a folder. For example, on my main work Mac, I've set my YouTube folder to red with a video camera emoji as a quick visual cue. And if you've got a Mac that supports Apple intelligence, you can even use your Genmoji creations here as icons, which opens up even more customization options. So those are the main areas where you can customize your Mac, but there are a few honorable mentions that I wanted to include at the end. 
The first one is pinned collections in the Photos app. In the redesigned Photos app, if you look at the sidebar on the left, you'll see a pinned section at the top. This is where you can keep the collections that you use most often. For example, if you've got a shared album that you're always updating, just right click on it and choose pin. It will move straight into the pinned section and you can drag it into whatever order you want. That's exactly what I did with a couple of shared albums that I'm constantly adding to. I just pinned them straight away. And if the app has pinned something that you don't want, just right click and choose unpin. You can set this section up however you like, so it always contains the collections that you actually use in photos. There's also a similar feature now in the music app. If you right click on an artist, an album, or even a playlist that you use all the time, you can choose pin. When you do that, a new pin section will appear in your library. You can expand or collapse it as much as you like, and it gives you quick access to the music that you're enjoying the most. So whether it's an album that you've got on constant rotation, an artist that you want to keep up with, or a playlist that you play every day while you're working, you can now get to all of it much more quickly in the Music app. In the Messages app, as long as you're talking to someone who also has an Apple device updated to the latest version of the OS, you can now set a background for the chat. To do this on the Mac, click on the name of the chat at the top of the screen then choose backgrounds from the sidebar. From here, you can pick from solid colors, themes like sky or water, photos from your photo library, or if you've got a Mac that supports Apple intelligence, you can even generate a background image with Apple intelligence. So there you go. Your Mac is now more customizable than ever. What do you think? Are there any customization options here that you plan to make use of? Or are there any that you really wish Apple would add but haven't so far? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.